Hi guys, what's up? It's Amanda and welcome back to Tokyo. If you guys don't know me already, my name is Amanda. I'm from Los Angeles. Currently, I'm living in Tokyo, Japan. Today's video is going to be about how to get married in Japan. Now, some of you may or may not already know, recently I got engaged to my wonderful, handsome boyfriend. And if you haven't already seen our engagement vlogs, there's two different ones. One's more like a music video montage style vlog, while the other is more about the story about how we got engaged. And I'll link them down below, but uh, today I'm not gonna talk about our engagement. Today I'm gonna talk about the process of getting married in Japan or in Tokyo. This is my first marriage, the first time ever getting married or planning a wedding. Some of you may already know that my Japanese is not very good. Yuji acts as my boyfriend and interpreter at times. I wanted to give you guys some information, hopefully help anybody out there who's trying to figure out how to get married in Japan. Whether or not you live in Japan currently or you live somewhere else around the world, you may be wondering how can I get married in Japan? Um, how can I have a destination wedding maybe? Or how do I get married in Japan? And hey, I'm already here in Japan and I want to know how the heck you do it. Getting married in Japan is quite different from getting married in America, let's say. Do take note that I will not be having a traditional Japanese wedding. Some of the tips and advice I will be giving you may have options to have a traditional Japanese wedding, so don't be so turned off to it yet. But I will be having a Western wedding in Japan. I will be doing a series of vlogs of getting married in Japan, as well as my traditional content. So if you're interested in more of my traditional content, not really interested in how to get married, don't worry. It's not gonna be an entire me getting married channel. It will include that at times, but I think you should still subscribe or stay tuned if you're not just interested in getting married. But if you are interested in getting married and all that other fabulous stuff, <laughs> that happens in Japan then please subscribe down below so Japan you may or may not know is a agency ran country they are very dominated by agencies we find jobs through agencies we find homes through agencies even apartments through agencies which is really like black and white from how I know life in Los Angeles if I want to find an apartment in Los Angeles what do I do I go to Craigslist I don't go to an agency. We find jobs through Craigslist, through LinkedIn. Again, we don't go through agencies for that type of thing, but Japan is opposite. They do everything through agency. The same goes for weddings. There are wedding agencies. So what I'm gonna be talking to you about today is a wedding agency. I was searching with Google Translate. I would type in Google Translate wedding venue Tokyo or wedding venue Japan. And then I would translate it into Japanese. And then I would copy and paste that and put it into Google search. And then it would come up with a list of websites. As I click on the websites, obviously they're in Japanese, right? So you have to make sure that on your Google browser, you have a translated option. So my Google Chrome browser translates everything everything from Japanese into English. So every time I go into a Japanese website, it will translate for me. It may or may not throw back at you some proper translations. So as I'm rummaging through websites, I notice uh, I come across a website called Hana Yume. Apparently Hana Yume is one of the biggest wedding agency, wedding, I should say not wedding agency, wedding venue agency companies, websites in Japan. You'll see their advertisements on trains, um, and uh, magazines, a lot of different places. Let me find out. Let me bring in my laptop actually so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about at the same time. Coffee. By the way, I'm gonna show you Hana Yume's website already translated, not the Japanese version, just so you can kind of read it as I'm reading it. Okay. So I'm on the Hana Yume website. Um, there's a couple different tabs here. And one of them being finding a wedding hall, free consultation desk, and bridal fair. So let's talk about bridal fair very quickly. A bridal fair is when a wedding venue will set up an event to invite engaged couples to their venue. 
and they will show them the venue as well as serve them a course meal um, to show you what the food will taste like at the venue quality of food they'll show you the venue they'll show you photos they'll show you everything that you can receive at that specific venue so the bridal fair presents the whole package deal to you as well as uh, food sampling sometimes you'll get to see the dresses as well with these wedding venues you must keep in mind that usually they're a package deal which is very strange and a little bit difficult as well it can be helpful in some cases but also difficult and let me explain why these package deals they come with everything they come with your food your drinks the venue the MC the wedding dress the hair the makeup the tuxedo the flowers any entertainment that you want and the photographer am I missing anything no, that's pretty much it. Yes, so it comes with all of those items. Here's where the difficult part comes in. If you opt out for one of those items, some venues will not let you do that. For example, I don't want a generic photographer at my wedding. Um, whether or not that photographer is good, maybe, but I would prefer to select my photographer. I would like to get to know them on a personal level, see the quality of work they do. You know, every photographer has a different style. Whether or not it vibes with your style, you don't know. So I definitely don't want like any package photographer. And uh, another thing is wedding dress. So in Japan, women are a lot more petite, a lot more smaller framed. So these wedding dresses that are included in the package are made for Japanese women. So that scares me a bit. Uh, if I cannot choose my own wedding dress um, and I have to select something from their one bridal shop, I think you guys can imagine how terrifying that can be for a woman to maybe they won't have the wedding dress that fits me. Maybe they don't have the style that I like. Yeah, it's terrifying for me to be constricted to choosing one wedding dress from one vendor. like. Horrifying, horrifying. Here you can find the wedding hall. You can select your area, Kanto being where Tokyo is, and you can choose any part of Tokyo or Chiba, Kanagawa, Saitama. These are all prefectures in Japan that you have options of selecting from. Uh, you don't have to search Kanto. You can search Kansai, which is Osaka, Kyoto. Um, you can choose other prefectures like Hokkaido, uh, Okinawa, anywhere okay so Hana Yume's big selling point is if you visit a venue through the agency's website Hana Yume's website you will get a massive massive discount on your wedding package recommended wedding hall special features so these are the special features of each wedding hall to kind of hope for you to get more intrigued in their service chapel by type so you can do like outdoor chapel indoor chapel um, Japanese clothes look which would mean like you want a traditional Japanese um, bridal attire or would you like a Western bridal attire type bride attire type <laughs> maternity wedding if you got to get married on the quick you know like they have maternity wedding packages for you with maternity wedding dresses by the way so don't worry about that Hana Yume free consultation desk so this is what I went to I actually set up an appointment with Hana Yume and met with them we had our free consultation so now I'm going to tell you about Hana Yume's wedding consultation experience so one of the first questions she asks is would you like to be signing your marriage certificate at the time of the wedding or will you be signing the certificate before the wedding oh they asked us about the date in which we are getting married and here's the thing about choosing a date and I think this is really important for anybody planning a wedding in Japan there are certain factors that are going to make your wedding more expensive if you get married here in Japan one is are you getting married on a weekend because you can save a significant amount of money if you get married on a weekday well, same goes for holidays by the way so holidays and weekends are going to be more expensive and weekdays will be less expensive the second factor that will contribute to a high cost for a wedding is the season you get married. So she told us peak season for weddings in Japan is actually October. Weather is awesome in October. The third factor is, and something you guys probably have not thought about, is the Japanese, how would I say it, astrology calendar? It's not a Chinese astrology calendar. It's not a 
Chinese astrology calendar. It's not a Western astrology calendar. It's actually a Japanese astrology calendar. These dates have a, a very lucky day and a very unlucky day. So if you want to get married on a lucky day in Japan, your cost is going to go way up because that's um, a lot of people follow this kind of superstition where they like to get married on a lucky day or open a business on a lucky day, um, do things on a lucky Japanese calendar day. Um, I don't believe in that. So if you don't believe in it, then I would suggest to choose a really unlucky day. What is most important to you? For example, is cost most important to you? Is aesthetics most important to you? And they're going to help you tailor it all down and to find the right venue for you, which kind of, it's kind of nice to get all of that kind of like squared away with somebody else who knows what they're doing. Um, and by the way, did I mention that this is a free service? So you go for free, absolutely free. Oh, then we talked about the package details, which I wasn't familiar with, like wedding package details. One of the main concerns I had was, what if I want to bring my own wedding dress because I found a really nice wedding dress somewhere, you know, and I want to choose that one. What if? Um, they said that you can bring your wedding dress for most venues, not all venues, and if you do, they will charge you. You're gonna charge me for bringing my wedding dress? For bringing my wedding dress? Venue will charge me about 50,000 yen to bring my own wedding dress. So a lot of the packages at the venues, if you decide to remove some features from this package, I don't know why or how it works, but they wanna charge you. And that doesn't just go for wedding dress, that goes for a lot of things actually. So it's very, very bizarre. Some venues will not let you bring some decorations that you want, some will. It's Oh, and um, we talk, We also talked about an English service, like which venues offer an English service. Now, I don't think Hanayume knew too much about which venues offered a bilingual support or staff um, within their venue. I don't think it's something that's very popular, but I can tell you, I've already seen a couple venues. Most places are gonna offer bilingual support. So if you're interested in that, those vlogs that are soon to come, Stay tuned. We talked about with the venues about food allergies. Like if some of our guests cannot eat certain foods, for example, like someone's vegetarian or someone has a, a nut allergy or somebody's diabetic. Like I asked all these questions um, about that and what, are, am I gonna get charged more if I tailor the menu? And they said absolutely not that they will tailor it to whatever your needs are. After we talked about all these points, the Hanayume consultant left us for a brief moment and came back to show us some venues that we had selected. She didn't really show me anything that stood out. So I asked her, hey, we have to go, but can you please email us a few other options and then we can book an appointment. We want to book an appointment. We just, we gotta go. We gotta go. We got another appointment. We don't want to be late. So she says she would take a look and she would email us some other options. So a couple days pass, no email. I asked Yuji to please email her and ask her if she found any other venues that we could possibly look at. And she said, oh no, that those were the only venues she found. So I knew she didn't want to deal with us. So fine, I'll do it myself. I went on Hanayumi's website and I started browsing through all the venues and I definitely found more that she had missed. So uh, she didn't want to put the effort in. So that's a... Mm. Oh, yeah, that's basically the starting process for, you know, this venue hunt that I'm on right now in Japan. Hanayume was helpful. They told me a lot of information. I think they would help any Buddy else that were to go there, I would recommend asking if there is a bilingual staff that can help because in most cases there are. Even if they know minimal English, just keep your English simple, work with them, and I'm sure you can get somebody who can communicate really good, really, really effectively. Um, I do recommend trying Hana Yume only because they answer a lot of questions that you might have and you're probably gonna get a little bit more of a discount when you go book an appointment with these venues. Uh, did guys, did I tell you this, this video is not sponsored by Hana Yume? I have to, 
I should probably tell you that. This video is not sponsored by Hana Yume, by the way. It's just my own experience and I wanted to share it with you to help you guys out. So there will be more wedding planning vlogs to come as well as other Tokyo vlogs to come. So it's again, not just the wedding channel, but for the time being, there might be some wedding planning vlogs coming up. And also it's a lot of fun filming at these venues. Oh, it's a lot of fun. So I'm gonna live it up for now. Hope you guys can live it up with me. So until next time, I'll see you guys. Bye. It's gonna feel like